Hello everyone. In the last video, we created a very basic canvas with two different elements, a button and a text. And in this video, I will show you how you can update the money you have on the text here by clicking on the button. So to do so, I will go into the project and I will create a new script. And I go and right click and then create and then create a C sharp script. I'm going to rename that game manager. .cs. I'm going to open the script in Visual Studio. In this script, we just have two methods, the start and the update methods. By default, Unity always put those two methods here every time you create a new class. So I'm going to go back into the project and in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click and create an empty object. I will then rename that game manager as well. And I will drag and drop the game manager script into this new game manager object we created. So now when you click on the game manager object and see that it has a script attached, also named game manager, and we can see that there is pretty much nothing happening. So I'm going to go back into the game manager script. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to create a public variable. And in this case, I'm going to create an integer. So public int, and I'm going to call that money. I'm going to give it a default value of zero. And I'm going to save that. And if I go back into the, the editor, I can see that now in the game manager object, under the game manager script, I can see that we have this variable money that is available to us. We can see the value is zero, exactly like what we did in the script. So we can see it because this variable is set as public, so it can be accessed by any different classes and also by the editor. Right now, I'm going to leave this variable as public. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create two variables. The first one being a reference to the text object we created in the first video. So I'm going to go and write public. Then I'm going to type text, mesh, and I can see two options. Uh, three options that are popping up, just text mesh, but also I can see the text mesh pro option or the text mesh pro UGUI. And I'm going to click on this one. By doing that, Visual Studio is importing the text mesh pro namespace. So now we can reference any text mesh pro objects in the script. And this one, I'm going to name it money text. I'm going to save. And if I go back into the editor, I can see now we have our money object here, and we have a new object, money text. Right now, the money text has nothing as a reference, it's set to none. So I'm going to drag and drop the money text object we created in the last video, and I'm going to attach it here. So now, the game manager script has two variables, money, money text, and this money text is attached to an object. So what that means is I can access the money text and change it directly inside my script. And we're going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the start method right now. We don't need it. And in the update method, I'm going to say that this money text variable, its text, which I just have to type money text dot text, will be equal to um, money from script. So if I go back into the editor, if I go into play mode, you can see that the text here is displaying what we typed in the script. So what we want in this case is for this text to show the amount of money we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to change this to say money. However, the moment I do that, we can see that there's one issue. It says here that this cannot be converted from a type int to a type string. This is because the money we have is an integer, but the text of the money text object is a string. To have this conversion is actually very simple. You just have to type to string, put the parenthesis, and here you go. The error is fixed. What's happening here is we're converting the money object, which is an integer, into a string. Now, if I go back into the play mode, I can see that the text is now displaying zero, which is the amount of money we have. So if I were to change the amount of money directly into the editor here, 
let's say 20. Then I can see that the text is changing to 20. So what's happening here in more details is that the update method in Unity is called every frame per second. There's by default 60 frames per second. So this method is called 60 times every second. What it does is it updates the game 60 times per second to whatever is being called inside the method. What's happening here in our case is that every frame, the money text object is updated to reflect the value of the money variable. So right now we're just changing the text, but what we want is to have a function in our button that will update the text for us and updates the amount of money we have. So I'm going to create a new function here. I'm going to type public void and update money. So what I want to do here is that every time I click on a button, I want the amount of money I have to increase. So pretty much I want to change the money by whatever value I choose. In this case, just for the sake of showing you how it works, I'm just going to choose 10. So every time this, every time this function is called, every time the update money function is called, the amount of money we have will be increased by 10. So when I go back into the editor and if I click on the button, I can see it has different components, including a button component. And inside this button component, we can see that there's an onClick function. So it means that every time the button is clicked, it will apply a function. But right now, the list is empty. So we want to add the function we just created. So I'm going to add one function into the list of the onClick functions. And right here, we can see that we need to drag an object. So in this case, I'm going to drag the game manager object. You can see that no function has been selected. So if I click on that, I can see that the game manager is now appearing in the list of functions. And if I looked into this game manager object, I can see at the very bottom, the update money function we just created. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to save my project and I'm going to go into play mode. And now every time I click, the amount of money we have is increased by 10. So if I were to change that to, let's say 20, that every time I would click on the button, the amount of money we have would increase by 20. And if I click on the game manager here, I can see that you can see that the money variable is updated here. So just before finishing this video, what really matters here is that this value has been hard coded here. I'm running 20 here, but I may want to change this value in different ways. For example, just in the editor or later on by using different upgrades and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it public int once again. And I'm going to change that to money per tab. And I'm going to say that the money per tab is going to be 10. And instead of saying that in the update function, I want to change the amount of money I have by increasing it by 20, I'm going to say I want to increase that by whatever the amount of money per tab is. So I'm just going to choose the money per tab variable. Back into the editor, I can now see in the game manager object and in the game manager script that the money per tab is 10, what we just declared in the script. And if I go into play mode and click on tab, it's increasing by 10. And here, if I change money per tab to a higher value, let's say 1000, then every time I will click, it will increase by 1000. If I say 200, then it will increase by 200. So this is it for this video. Right now we have a very basic system that every time you click on a button, your money increases. And in the next video, we'll see how to have upgrades to improve the money per tap by each level of this upgrade. So I'll see you in the next video.